let's get this shot on the road. Hello, people. <laughs> The celebration starts out here in Cambridge. Welcome to the video Q and A. Apologies for the um, lateness of it. Uh, I was waiting to get my new camera, which I'm filming now, and also comes with a microphone. This little thing, which is why you can hear me so well. And I wanted to wait for that because obviously it's a Q and A video based on me talking. So I'm um, going to go through all the questions that you guys commented. This is going to be the Q and A plus everything you need to know for playing in NZ. Then I've got some other questions which have nothing to do with NZ, but more about me and my rugby. I will answer them at the end. I'm going to try and make it fun, throw in some diagrams and some cuts and videos. I might throw my highlights at the end. Who knows? Watch the end and find out. Get your notepad out. Um, I've got some info to come your way. Anyway, question one. The Tom Galliano. Um, Hi Cam, big fan of your content. What's the biggest challenge you've encountered whilst living and playing in NZ? First challenge would say, playing-wise, mixing into the team. Obviously, it's a brand new team completely different country, so I don't know how they're going to play, what they're going to be like. Um, obviously, you're not going to be bang, just banging the team first session. It's going to take some time to build into that, build friendship, you know, and all that. Um, however, I will say they were great. Like, Kiwi people are so nice. Like, getting into that first session, mentally, I reckon, I was like, oh, how's this going to be? Went perfect. Playing-wise, adapting to their game. Um, didn't know what I was getting myself into. Obviously, I've seen in super, super Rugby. Obviously, it's a high attacking game, but at the lower levels at club, I didn't know what to expect at all. Um, again, that was more on the mental side. Once I got into it, I knew what they wanted and how they wanted to play. You know, it was easy. I can adapt to that. So those are the two things. Good question. Question number two, uh, Liam. Has it been tough adjusting to the new culture in NZ? I would say no uh, for me personally because I've been around Kiwis all my life. One of my best mates. I grew up with in... Um, back in England, Northampton, um, he was a Kiwi from Hamilton, is it currently? Um, so I've been around him throughout uh, playing rugby in France. I, there's always, most of the time, been a Kiwi in the team. Every now and again. so I'm kind of used to how they are. So I expected it. So going over the going over there wasn't much of a shock. I mean, obviously, if there's one thing I had to pick. The culture shock was after obviously the hacker. Um, so our team we had to learn it. We had hacker training um, because when you in our team when you got your fiftieth or or your hundredth game. Your 50th, you get a blazer. Um, and your 100th game, you got a blazer. We had on two, two or three occasions where that happened. So um, after we did the speeches and before we had food, we performed a hacker for them. I jumped in on that. Um, I learned some of the words. I'm not going to lie, it's pretty hard. Um, there is a video. I'll chuck it up now.
don't think you can see me in it because it kind of, you can see it cut me off a bit, but I did 100% learn all the moves. And one thing I'll say, if you do go over there, don't be shy, throw yourself into it. Because I said to the boys, I don't know. And they were like, nah, do it. Throw yourself into it. The more effort you give, better will look for you. If you just shy away and don't do it, guys will be like, oh, fuck. And you obviously, you look like a twit. So there you go. Question number three. Big question, good question. Um, what is the biggest difference between New Zealand and France regarding training, mindset, tactics, and setup? So we will go with training. So at club level, um, less training, two trainings a week, Tuesday, Thursday. Skills, everyone does skills. Forward, back, which is how it should be. Everyone does it. Um, so that's the difference in training. Obviously, we do your splits but over in France. Forwards don't do skills. Not in many, I've been in maybe one team where they join in on the hands, but over there, we start the session, everyone does, because it's important, and that you can see, see that in Super Rugby when they play. The Kiwi teams, international, all those forwards can play in the backs. They have the skills to do so. Also in terms of the skills, short and sharp. So it's five, ten, ten minutes maximum on one um, drill, change to the next one, change to the next one, take all those two or three, put them into the game, touch or whatever, finish that, come back to it. Da, da, da. So I mean, it's short and sharp, keeps the mind going. Great way of training. Um, in France, it's not like that. In France, it's 2-1 drill for a very long time. Sometimes it changes. With some teams, I've had that. But it's normally do one drill for quite a fair long time. And then a game at the end. Um, but yeah, so more short and sharp in New Zealand. Part number two, mindset, you said. Um, so, positive. Always positive. There is not much negativity, if any, coming through in that. Um, is If something shit does happen, it's positive reinforcement. They'll come in like, boys, what can we do? This just happened, what can we do about it? And normally it's the, the main, it's not the coaches that take that, it's the, so we, we hold ourselves accountable. It's the, the top players that take that. Anyone could, you can be a brand new player, you can throw something in, everyone will listen and respect you. It's not a hierarchy. It's, it's a player's team. The coaches obviously give their input because they are coaches, but they'll kind of, they won't ever go, this is how I want it done. It's because I kind of think maybe we should do that. What do you guys think? That was the what I got from the two coaches that were there. Great coach as well. Um, so yeah, I think that jumps on the old mindset. Just positive. Uh, setup wise, um, I'd say kind of in a one through three one situation, but kind of not at the same time. You'd mostly always have your pods. You'd have your pod of three. That's standard in rugby. But you didn't have to be in it. It was kind of it was fluid, loose open rugby. You have the forward over there. He's over there. Sweet, get him into the game. You don't go, no, you have to be here. If we're building the phase, yeah, come in, get this three, build the blocks. But then after that, it's fluid, it's open. Anyone can do anything. Um, if a forward wants to take a grubber, he will take a grubber. If he chip, he'll, he'll play it. He'll do what he wants. It's, very, it's a very open setup with a bit of foundation in there. It's the best way I can explain it. Question number four, um, can you break down the intensity of training sessions as a backline player in New Zealand? I'll jump on both. Um, so as a backline player, so like I said before, two training sessions, um, way more skills based for this, us backs. We rarely did contact, maybe dropping a shoulder or a bit or a, a hug, but um, it was very skills based and the intensity is what you give. Obviously the coach wants you to do 100%, you give everything intensity wise. Um, and there's a lot under fatigue. So we'd be going, we going, do this, do this, do this, 100%. You're tired, don't care, pick up the ball, play it. So you're working the skills under fatigue, so high intensity. And then when we, so that's when we split and then we come together. There was contact in there once a week. Sometimes we didn't do contact in a week, but you go, you go hard. You're not 100 billion percent trying to smash them, but you run hard. You get tackled hard with a chop or a hit, but no one's there to smash anyone. But the intent is there. There's no half-hearted. You get tackled, you run hard, and it's training. That's what, that's what it's supposed to be. So there you go, that answers hopefully that. Okay, question number five, how did you get the opportunity uh, to play in NZ? Um, so the ways you can do it, so you can message agencies or agents at the low levels there, I mean agents going around, but agencies are on-site management, inside running, the rugby agents, there's another, they always post stuff, NZ, about looking for players, there's loads. Go on Facebook, you can find them very easily. Obviously you have to pay them a small fee. I think it's like 100, 150, the one I went through at the start, but then I said, no, I can do this myself. I've done it in France, it's gonna be easy, easier to do. In New Zealand, um, all I did was, um, I went on the internet on Google and I tried to find all the teams across the whole country, um, the regions I was interested in. So I looked at the ITM Cup, who were the top like four regions consistently. Um, ones that stood out was Waikato, um, 
they won it the year before I went. So I was like, there must be a higher level. Also, one of my best mates, like I said, lives there. He lives in Hamilton. Um, so made it a bit easier for me. And that was also, it's very central in terms of being a tourist and traveling. So I could go anywhere. So that's why I chose that place. But it's not the question. Um, how did I get it? I then took those teams. I contacted only the top six teams um, via Facebook, straight message. Or I'd go on the website and I would find a coach's email or any form of email I could find about the club, send them an email message saying, yo, this is my name, this is my position, this is what I've done, this is where I played, I want to come over, um, here's my CV, let's talk. 90% of the teams got back to me. Um, some were like, no, you'll be coming over too late because I had to finish my season here before I could go over. Some teams were like, oh yeah, sweet, because there's two rounds, we'll get on that after. Um, and then, yeah, I came across... Um, two teams on voice call um, one uh, next to Nelson in Hastings and another one in Cambridge Hotepu there's a team here we had a talk see what could be on offer and then um, obviously I went with Hotepu because for me it was the high level region my best mate was there and the offer was better um, to which the offer was I'll come on to that after offers you can expect so there you go that answers that I'm going to take this as a question into New Zealand hi bro is it Possible to find a job like rugby player or strength conditioning? Thank you. Um, rugby player in the high levels in New Zealand, yeah, you can. Low levels, not so much. You'd have to work alongside like I did. If you play club, you need to find your own job, work. However, if you manage to get contracted, you have to be a high level player. You can get contracted by the region. I'm pretty sure Waikato, they would then um, contract you as well as if you got picked for the Chiefs, which is a super rugby team, then you'd be a rugby player full time. Obviously, you get paid. Don't know how much, but it's probably a decent amount of money. Otherwise, if you didn't make the chief squad, I'm pretty sure you get paid by the region, the ITM Cup team. If I'm wrong and anyone knows this, correct me, you get paid by them. Yeah, it's very different how it works over there because the seasons are shorter. Not 100% sure on that, but yeah, rugby player, you can make it high levels. Strength conditioning. Um, we had SNC coaches in our team. I'm not sure if they're paid or not, or it's just a long work experience. They get experience in the rugby field. Um, but in the high levels, obviously, you can get an SNC job. Um, there you go. Quickly for the last one, are you in New Zealand on loan or did you sign a new contract? Are you going back to France? Um, so when at the time I was in NZ, so I played the season in France, finished in April, no, finished in, yeah, April or May, uh, went over. So I then had to cancel my contract here at 11 months because you've got to change your license. Whatever country and you've got to change your license to that country you're playing. So I was in a contract for a year, I had to cut my contract at 11 months um, changed my license over to NZ and then uh, and then played over there for three to four months and then I came back over to France which is where I am right now doing this Q&A um, to continue the season again and I came back in August for a month or a few weeks of pre-season and then I was in the season so that's what I've done for the last two years here in season off season go over there come back okay I'm going to jump on the stuff I think you need to know so first things first visa talk most important so you just go on the the New Zealand uh, website, um, New Zealand government website. Pick the visa you want, working visa you want. Be careful, you can only apply for this once. I didn't know that at the time. So I only applied for a year. Um, I wish I applied for, I think you can apply two years, I think. And then you can renew one more year. Might be wrong. But uh, I applied for one year and then wanted to, I wanted to renew it for another one to two years. You have to be in the country to do that. Didn't know that. So I was still in France and my flight was the week after the renewal date. So I completely messed that up. But anyway, get your work and visa. So you, when you can go over there, you can work. Um, it's fairly quick, depending on what country. I'm obviously speaking from a, a British, pa British passport. So it took two weeks, I think. I'll say two to four weeks is what I'll say. Um, relatively quick. Jumping on as well for the rugby licenses. It's quick. Obviously, depending on country. New Zealand rugby, they are on it. It took the FFR, the French Federation, a bit longer to get it done because French just take a bit of time sometimes. Um, but once I got the license done and how to do that, you ask your club. They'll, they'll do that for you. They'll release you. Then they have to send an email to New Zealand uh, rugby thing um, and they talk between themselves. And once ends, they get it literally like a day or two and it's done, like they're on it. So... That's visa and license talk done.
just, I just, I just hope I keep it going. Hope I play hard off for quarters. Have the courage to not get discouraged. Taking steps that seem so blurry. I wanna do this, I wanna do that. When I fall down, gotta get back up. Go hard again, restart again. But every time I fall down, I'm much stronger than me. But my tolerance is much more than I thought it is. Gotta chase these dreams, but I breathe in and out to live. Gotta make mistakes to make better decisions. Gotta be in bad shape to be in better conditions. Hard work, dedication, hard work, and some patience. A proclamation. This is the year I'm gonna make it. God exceed all my expectations. God be my strength, my foundation. God, you know all my limitations. God, I know you see my frustrations. God, deliver me, plant me like a seed. Open doors and close the ones that are for me. Facing opposition, you gave me a vision. Making hard decisions. I know the past is a past that I need to stay focused. Tomorrow ain't promised. Live in the moment. I know you use me because I'm not your typical go to. You see something in me, it's your pick, you pick me. This all happened quickly. No more overthinking. Taking back my city, no more self pity. This is Thanksgiving. Love the life you're living. I can't hold it and I feel it in my spirit. Gotta go and get it. It's a crazy feeling. It's a crazy feeling. It's a crazy feeling, can you feel it? It's a crazy feeling, it's a crazy feeling, it's a crazy feeling, can you feel it? It's a crazy feeling, it's a crazy feeling, it's a crazy feeling, can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Friction makes fire and pressure makes diamonds. Pressure makes fire and pressure makes diamonds. This treasure 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 makes fire and pressure makes diamonds. Divided by races, divided by classes, we're still segregated, so we're uneducated. Mainly, the offers you will get is flights paid one way, there, um, accommodation help, so they will find you accommodation, or if they're really nice, they might offer to pay the first couple of weeks. Um, and three would be uh, help you find a job or give you a job. Um, that's normally the average of what you get. Um, the inner city clubs tend to have less money, whereas the clubs that are a bit further out tend to have more money. What I also would recommend is asking the club for a car. You never know if they have an old rubbish car about or they will supply you a car that you can pay for or they'll even give you a car. Um, depends on what, what kind of club you're at, if they have money or if they don't have money or what the situation is that year, that season. You might even be lucky to get your flights paid there and back, but January you get your flights there, then they'll put you in accommodation most likely with players or someone within the club which is great for you because you want to be with ideally players because then you've got yourselves mates instantly you don't want to be with some randomers that you don't know and also getting yourself in the Hamilton area talking um, a lot of the rentals were for rooms and obviously no one wants a short term they don't do short term if you're there for a few months yeah they will but they'll do renting a whole house is pretty hard it's one thing it's expensive and I don't think many people give it unless they know you've got the money coming in um, so you'll find that there's anywhere from two to five people in a house, maybe more. The average, I'd say three. My first year, I was with two other players. My second year, I was with two other players. So it's perfect. Um, yeah, it's a good vibe. And then in terms of a job, I was lucky with the team that I, well, I was lucky with my situation because my best mate lives there and I worked for him. So I was sorted, but the club offered, they were like, oh, we get you a job in a, in a pub, in a bar, because it's less um, taxing on the body. Uh, a lot of jobs you got around there are in construction. Uh, I did concrete with my mate. Depends what you want. If, you, if you're cool with doing the construction stuff whilst playing rugby, happy days, because there's only two training sessions a week. So it's not mad. Um, but obviously when you go over there, in season over there is in winter. It gets a bit cold. We'll jump on how the season works next. So how the season works over there is two rounds. First round, second round. For the first round, I'm pretty sure you have to get in the top, depending on how many teams there are, you have to get in the top six to go through to round two to play for the playoffs. If you're in the bottom six or bottom however many, you then, I'm pretty sure you play down. In the second round, you play down with a lower level. I think that's how it works. Not 100% not sure on the bottom six, but we were in the top six both seasons. So first year I went, I arrived first round, I think a month in, because we got kicked out after the first round over here. Arrived in April, then we finished that first round, then you have a, a week off, and then we play the second round. Once you get through the second round, you have quarterfinal, semi-final, final. The season will be finished by uh, end of July. Like either the last week of the July or the week just before the end of July. So that's that's what we're looking at. So to confirm that, um, it starts April. So round one would start April, that first weekend, with the 6th, 7th, 5th. And then the... First round ends June 1st, and then I think you get a week off, and then you start again until end of July. So in the Hamilton League I was in, there was 
nine teams. So I believe the top six then go through to that second round and you replay all the teams. You play all the teams once in the first round and you play all the teams once again in the second round. So that's 100%, that's how it works. Also diving on how it works if you get to play year round and imagine you get picked. So you go club rugby, you play that club season. Once that finishes, I'm, then ITM season starts. And then once the ITM finishes, it then goes on to Super Rugby. It was well how it works in clubs. Um, so there were a lot, we had, I think maybe six or seven Super Rugby players in our team. So basically during the Super Rugby uh, season, there's a club as well, because um, they kind of fold over. So we had some players that when they weren't picked for the Chiefs, they'd come down and pay for the club, which is crazy thinking how you can play Super Rugby one weekend and then the next weekend you're playing club. Um, but it's also pretty cool because we played against some ex-pros, um, some current pros. Um, so that, that brings the level up, which is real cool because um, you get to learn off them. Um, and it's just, it's just it just shows how in New Zealand they're so, they're just humble people. That they're so like, I explain it like, feet on the ground. Like you could play, yeah, you're playing Chiefs, but then you're playing club as well. And they're real cool about it. I didn't meet one single player that was up themselves. They were honestly the coolest guys. Um, so that'd be one amazing thing to look forward to if you do go and play in New Zealand, having those guys in your team. And as well, for like example, Salvea, he played for his local club, played at fullback. So yeah, that's that. Uh, two applications that I would recommend you get. One's called Tribe, showed up here. Um, that you can use to find all the teams and fixtures in the different regions. So that will help you when you're looking for teams and who you want to play for, who's in the premiership, who's one below, how they performed the season before. Yeah, it's great way to find out all that stuff. Um, highly recommend getting it. Um, once you've got the app, you just have to, it's an app for all sports. So you have to click on rugby, then scroll down, you find the region you're playing in. I'll show it up all on the screen right now. Um, the second one I get for when you're a tourist is called Roadie. It shows you all the points around the whole country that you can go and visit. Um, the best app by far. I use that to plan all my days out, my then trip at the end of the year. Um, two apps, get them. Recommendations whilst you're in New Zealand, what you should and have to do. Number one, eat a pie. Eat as many pies as you can. The pies are the best, hands down. Mince and cheese, one of my favorites. If there's any kiwis in there, or well, anyone's been to NZ, comment your favorite pie, and we can have a debate about this. Um, I was big on the mince and cheese. I was big on the chicken, cranberry, I think it was. Um, and mushroom and something else, I think. Anyway, I, I ate a lot of pies. Damn, I have a good pie. Number two, go and see, if you can, go to the All Blacks play. Go and see if the local Super Rugby team play. Go and see it. The, you just have to. It's, it's a no-brainer. Three, be a tourist. Go absolutely everywhere you possibly can. If you're playing in the North or the South Island, North Island, a bit more busier, um, but if you play in the North Island, take a trip. Minimum week, two weeks, down south, hire a car and drive around. It's what I did. So I'm down south. What you can see now behind me is in Queenstown. Um, there's so many places you've got to go around and see at the same time as working. Don't work full time, work part time. But yeah, I'll throw in a few snippets of the country or the South Island in this video, enjoy. You can see on my Instagram all the places I visited, I took my drone, um, I miss that the most. Just doing a good old road trip, getting in the car and driving around. I think hands down, that South Island is the most beautiful part of the world. It is incredible. Get that done. Don't just stay in your bubble, play rugby, get out, do it. Last thing I'll give as a tip is your flight. Stick with one airline, don't go through a third party and book to try and find the cheapest airline and then go through four different airlines and stop here, stop here, 10 hour break. Don't do that. Pick one, go with them. Even if it's a bit more expensive, it's much better because you don't have to worry about your bags, you won't lose them. And you want a layover at three maximum, anywhere from two to four hours. You don't want a massive layover. You want a bit time to get off, get some food, stretch your legs and get on. The best route, I, went, I only went twice obviously. Best route for me is via Dubai. Um, the second time I think I, I went through Singapore, I think it was. The flights are way too long. The Dubai ones, the flights are long anyway, but the Dubai ones, because it's, I mean, I'm flying from Paris. Paris Dubai is like 10 hours, quick break, and then another 10 or 12 hours, I think it was. Um, whereas the other one I took, it was like Paris, Singapore, I think, 
it was long. It was like a 13, 14 hour trip. Then I had to go to Adelaide in Australia, um, along another long flight, stop off there. Then I went to, like, that was three stops. You just want just one stop changeover done. So one airline, Emirates, um, it's a good old go-to. Now I'll just jump some quick questions that weren't New Zealand related. Um, uh, the question was, in a few years, do you think you'll ever get into coaching or do you think you'll just want to play, put rugby behind you? 100% get into coaching after I finish rugby. That's what I want to do. Rugby for life. I do love it a bit too much. Next one, is your goal to get back to play in England or will you just continue in France? And with this, how long do you feel you can play at the level you are? Um, don't think I'll ever go back to England. Sorry, but England rugby is in a bit of a hole. Financially, it's a problem. Unless you're in the Premiership, and even that, there's a lot of teams folding. If you're in the Prem, you've got good cash. If you're in the Championship, you don't have anything, um, from what I've heard. Apart from like two or three, like Ealing and Pirates, I think you get good cash with that. But I've had mates that play there, and, it's, and there's not coin. Um, France, you can do it until Division 4, Division 5, sometimes Division 6, you can do it. It's a full-time job. Um, I'm full-time pro here. Have been for the last few years, well, since I arrived actually, um, apart from COVID year when I had uh, to get a job. Um, well, I wanted to get a job anyway because I had nothing to do. Um, so, yeah, probably just continue in France. I've got goals to go to Australia, go back to New Zealand again, um, and anywhere else. See what happens, really. MLR, Japan, doors are wide open. And how long do I feel I can play at this level? I mean, 28 now. Goal is to play until 38. I'm kind of Going for that goal, but obviously it's not my kind. Of, it's not my body. Just see how it goes. I like to stay easily stay up here until thirty. I'd say. Um, I don't know. Kind of got to judge it. See the way it goes. Once the body starts giving on itself, I'll start to come down the levels. I think. But twenty eight, still young. I'm in my prime. It's a bit of a long one, but I'll try and shorten it a bit about yourself, like how you got into rugby. Um, decided one day I was like, Mum, Dad, I want to play rugby. Some kid plays it in school. Took myself down to Northampton Old Scouts, played there. Then I then moved over just up the road to Northampton. Old Northamptonians, um, so that's just club rugby. And then when I hit 17, I trialled over at Bedford Blues Academy, some championship. Stayed there for two years whilst playing at Moulton College as well. And then first contract over in Scotland Premiership, which is in 2015. And then in 2016, I came straight up to France, Federal 2. Two years in Federal 2, then moved up to Federal 1, um, stayed in Federal 1. Then two years ago, became, they became Federal 1, then a National 2 they created. Went up to National 2, and I've been in National 2 for the last three seasons. And lastly, how you took your game to the next level to play professional. Um, emailed a team my mate was playing for. He gave me the president's email. I always wanted to play in France. and No influence anywhere. I was like, I want to go to France. It's where I'm playing. And they got that done, and the first contract I got was... Cash, apartment, um, everything's paid for. Stayed pro for two years, and then after that, I went full-time pro at Macon, and then from there, just just moved around. Just They liked my CV, and then continued to make my game greater and learn the language. Learn the language, it's important. And then you asked, what is it through playing as much as possible, training, obviously playing as much as possible, you want the most experience, and then training hard, and just keeping it consistent, improving your game. There's no special code to it, no special recipe to it, just get it done. How many times a week do I practice my kicking? Uh, before, when I was kicking mad, um, I practiced almost every day. I used to go like hour and a half sessions, but a bit much. I've kind of toned it down now to just a little every day, a bit after training, a bit of kicking here and there. Um, the last few years, I've toned it down probably a bit more, focus on dif different parts of my game. But after training, 15, 20 minutes, skills, get through some kicking. If you're a place kicker, every day or every other day, three times a week, just going to the post, you don't need to go for an hour. You can if you want. I used to do that. I used to go an hour and a half, two hours. Um, but now I just learn, just get kicks in, get a few, go through your routine, 45 minutes, different types of kicks, an hour, you can be out of there. How high is the standard of rugby in the league you are now compared to previous years? I mean, obviously it's highest, the, the highest league I've played in, National 2, um, compared to Federal 2 where I was when I first arrived. No one was pro, well, barely no one was pro then. Um, everyone had a job on the side. Um, you know, lots of ex-pros and young kids and guys trying to come up. So big difference. And obviously in the higher levels, you've got lots of pros from Pro D2, Top 14 or wherever they play come across. Like we've had, we've got guys who played Super Rugby, Pro D2, Top 14, internationals in our team. So the level is up there. Two quick questions. What do you do on your rest days, days off? I rest, I do nothing. Michael play a bit of golf. I do that a lot recently. Just gives you that mental break as well. 
play golf, I'll go to the spa, chill and watch uh, TV films, or I'll do something on here. And full on rest is rest. If I want to get out of the house, I'll go probably go for a walk, um, take a bike just to get myself out of the house and get the body moving a bit, but nothing too crazy. How do you get to the point where you started getting paid to play rugby? Like I said earlier, just messaged the team over in France and they they wanted me, they signed me and this is the contract they gave me. And yeah, I was 18. No, I was 19 when I first signed my first one in Scotland. So yeah, I don't really have much to say. I just kind of emailed a team at the top levels and all the different levels and the contract came with the money. Uh, will you, would you come and play rugby in Australia? Yes, I'm looking to do that maybe next season. Um, looking to up the old shoot shield. That's the plan. Who is the best player you have played with or against? I say the most high profile player I've played against is Adam Thompson. Ex All Black, played against him, Hampton Old Boys. Best player, I mean, there's loads. There's some guys that aren't known and some that are known. It's kind of an impossible question, that one. Sorry. How many times a week do you go to the gym? So in our training in season, we have three gym sessions, optional four. So we have the first two days, which we go hard on. You know, you either got your, we're on full body at the moment, or you got your upper and your lower, depends what team you're in. So I got those two, so separate on Sunday, Monday off, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the Thursday off. You can do optional extras if you want, maybe like a shoulder circuit or something. Um, then the Tuesday, it, Friday is then power. Mainly three, optional four, in season. Do you just look to travel around and play footy or is your ultimate goal to get a contract yet? Yeah, I'm a pro. Where is the hardest place you have been to to make the A-team? Um, I'd probably say, or I've played pretty much all my rugby in France, so I'd say France. Lots of competition in terms of foreigners, uh, license rules, ex-pros coming down, good players coming up. So yeah, Just, yeah, simple answer, France. Where is the most physical place you have played? I would say New Zealand. Because you've got Islanders popping about, you've got current pros, ex-pros popping about, um, and they bang a shoulder. No such thing as hard tackles over there. Took a lot of hits on the head, um, chest level, you know, they they go hard over there. Yeah, New Zealand. Ah, that's that, people. q and A's done. I hope it helped you. Take you here. Um, any questions, any more questions people have, Throw them in the comments, I will answer them straight away. Um, I hope it helped you, I hope you wanna to go to NZ, play there, experience it, you will not regret it, get it done. And I hope you're with me right until the very end. Thanks for watching. See you in the next series.